Treasury yields go up, so do mortgage rates, but housing data is down. Welcome to Market Insight. I'm David Pollard. U.S. Treasury yields have pushed higher as investors weigh economic data and warnings from Fed officials that the decline in inflation may have stalled. And is the housing market headed for worse? Existing home sales fell in March by 4.3 percent. This after data on Tuesday showed U.S. single-family home building tumbled, with housing starts down over 12 percent. Well, let's get a view on all that from First American Chief Economist and Housing Specialist Mark Fleming. Welcome, Mark. It's great for you to join us today. So we've had two pieces of data hinting very strongly at a struggling housing market, and yet house prices were still up 4.8% in March over the previous 12 months. What are you seeing? Well, you're absolutely right. I mean, mortgage rates are drifting higher. Uh, The 10-year yield is, you know, getting closer to five than it was to four. And that means higher mortgage rates. The existing home sales numbers that came out today actually reflect contracts closed a couple months ago. So that's even not reflecting the rates that are on the ground here in the United States today. So it's going to be tough. But how uh, mortgage rates, when they're higher, affect both the supply side and the demand side. So certainly curtails affordability for buyers, but it also disincents selling for existing homeowners. So that's part of the reason why there's, it's hard to get more home sales. But when you think about that supply and demand dynamic, it's not necessarily the case that prices go down because sellers restrict the supply relative to the restricted demand. And what we're basically experiencing today is you know, a shortage of supply even relative to that lower demand because of higher mortgage rates and therefore prices are rising. So could the data that we've seen this week, could that get even worse going forward? And how will the rise in mortgage rates play into that? You say they could hit last October's high of 7.8 percent. How likely is that and how potentially damaging would it be? Well, I learned long ago to try not to forecast the Fed, but I would say we're getting close to that high watermark of 7.8 percent. And this higher for longer environment certainly makes it likely that we could be around that or possibly higher. I think... At this point, everyone on the demand side is sort of getting more used to a 7% mortgage, but the real problem is the supply restrictions. And so people's unwillingness to participate in the housing market is probably the bigger issue than the affordability with higher mortgage rates at this point. All that said, essentially, it means that not a lot of activity, although people do transact for a variety of other reasons than just the pure financial. And as we get further away from the high water marks of late last year, more people are likely to do that because of building, you know, needing a bigger home, getting divorced, changing a job, having children, all of those sorts of things drive demand and sales. So you don't want to predict what the Fed's going to do, but Jerome Powell did sound quite hawkish this week. Yields are going up. Are we in the realm of possibility of no rate cuts at all this year. I think you have to put that on the table. After all, from the Fed's perspective of their dual mandate, they're trying to get inflation under control. They also want to maintain maintain labor market stability. That doesn't seem to be a problem. The labor market seems to be able to take these higher rates. So staying the course to try and get that inflation down comes at no cost of instability in the labor market seemingly today. So does the debate around rates still pivot around the labor market, which still looks quite tight according to today's jobless claims numbers? The labor market as well as the consumer. The American consumer seems to be um, extremely resilient in the face of these high rates and continues to spend. So the combination of strong labor market and strong consumer means strong GDP growth. Um, One side of the mandate seems to be handling things fine. Okay, Mark Fleming of First American, many thanks for sharing your insights today. And that is Market Insight. You can watch more videos on Reuters.com.